Today, we are going to take perspective one step further and talk about atmospheric perspective. Atmospheric perspective was most discovered or brought out during the Renaissance time. And what artists figured out was that you could make something appear closer or further away by using a few special techniques. So one of those things is as things move into the distance, they get grayer and bluer. Coloring the things that you intend to be further away with a grayer, bluer color. And to add on to that, actually they get lighter as well. And I did not write that down, but as they move into the distance, they get grayer, bluer. Oh, my brush is dirty. <laughs> Not oranger. That does not happen. I don't even know if oranger is a word, but <laughs> that was an accident. Uh, so they almost get a little bit hazy. Another thing that happens as objects move further into distance into the distance is they get smaller. The density of the object will also, it will become less dense, or in other words, it will be blurrier. Which means that the, the edges or the outline might be fuzzier or hit and miss. harder to see and naturally as you can see also overlapping occurs and lastly as things get further away the objects move closer together so if I were to draw the painted lines on the road they don't connect until it appears as you are looking further and further out, that the lines start to run into one line. So pay attention to that. Pay attention to objects as you look at them further away and see if you can tell as the mountains overlap other mountains, if you're in a place where there are mountains, and you'll notice how the mountains that are in the back are getting lighter and grayer and bluer. You'll notice how the trees in the distance appear smaller than the trees closer together. And um, I think that's a pretty obvious thing that they get blurrier on the edges. You can't see them. The texture of the object and the distinguish different parts of the object are harder to see. And that objects get closer together as they move further away. So maybe the... Um, power lines, if you have power lines, you'll notice that they become closer to look, they appear to be closer together. Or if there are trees in a row, they appear closer together as they get further away. So notice that notice the power lines, notice the trees, notice the line in the middle of the road and how it becomes closer together as it gets further away. All right, on our note card today, we are going to experiment with this objects getting closer together. And I put a card underneath this so that when I draw on my note card, I'm not inventing my paper here. Okay, for our warm up, we are going to do a tile floor. 
And I remembered doing this when I was in college, learning how to do this, but I had to do a little refresher. Um, so this is borrowed from um, Alfonso Dunn. So he has um, some YouTube videos on how to do a tile floor. And so this is from his video, which I really appreciated because I remember thinking when I learned this in college, how cool it was and I could not remember how to do it. <laughs> um, so here I drew a horizon line and um, I'm gonna find the middle of that and draw my vanishing point here. And then, so remember the horizon line and the vanishing point, that's your eye level. And then we're gonna do a tile floor here. So each of my tiles is gonna be an inch. So I'm marking an inch on each of those. And I'm going to draw from the vanishing point to that sideline. Oh, I forgot the middle line. <laughs> but that's a really thick tile there. Okay. And then we're going to go from one corner to and make a diagonal line. So that is where the wall is going to intersect. So it's straight across. And now each area, each point on the line that intersects with the diagonal line, that's where, that's how we know where to draw the tile floor. I think this way from Alfonso is actually easier than the way that we learned it in college. There was like a, I remember there being a mathematical equation to it all, but I'm sure there's a logical explanation of why you can do this, but I think it's cool and it illustrates the point of how um, things that are further away become closer together even though a tile floor all of the tiles are going to be the same they're all going to be one foot by one foot but not when you are drawing them okay so now we're going to draw our wall here and we're going to try to make it as um perpendicular as possible because our walls are going to have 90 degree angles here. Maybe if we tried to add some pictures to the wall or like a window on the back of the room. Just using my ruler and matching up the lines on the clear part of the roller to get the lines. I could measure it. And I can still see my vanishing point here, so 
Help me draw my window ledge. So if you were gonna draw pictures on the side walls, you would still use your vanishing point over here. And then match up the line. So this time I'm going to use the vanishing lines to know where to match up and how to do the corners of this frame. So uh, maybe you could try to add some furniture or something to your drawing or keep it simple and just add windows or picture frames or mirrors or picture we are going to make a simple landscape watercolor and we are going to draw mountains layers of mountains so we're going to start with our horizon line and then we are going to draw your own version of a mountain range. On the next layer, you're going to draw another mountain range. So some overlapping will occur and it will peek through and then it will go behind and then it will peek through. And just keep in mind that as you move further back, then less of the mountain will show. And maybe do um, four or five layers of mountains. I did four and I feel pretty good about that. All right, so if you wanna add some details To the ground. Feel free to do that as well. I'm changing up this horizon line.
You could even add some trees or bushes or other things. It depends on how complicated you want to get. All right. So we're just keeping in mind as things move further back, they get lighter and more gray blue and smaller. And you can either decide to pre-mix your colors with acrylics or you can use watercolors for this. I'm going to be using watercolors just because I really enjoy the flow of the medium. All right, so here we go. I am going to start with my dark colors. I always find that starting with my darkest values is easier for me and going lighter. That's just how I like to work. I, you'll find I work a lot with watercolor. I just really enjoy the medium. It's easy and it's calming. So as things move further into the distance, they get grayer and bluer. As things are closer, you're going to see more yellow and red and orange. What do that, what do those colors have in common? They're all warm colors. So as things move closer to us, they tend to be warmer. Be careful not to touch the edge of this because it's not quite dry. So if I start touching it, it's going to start bleeding into each other. Okay. 
this area. It's pretty expansive here. Now, when I look at the sky and I look at pictures, the top of the sky in pictures always seems darker than as you move further down. I don't know why that is. But that just seems to be how it is. So I have this layer here, which I might have to come back over and darken one more time. I have this layer. So I have one, two, three, four, five layers that I'm going to try and do here. On this layer, I'm going to keep the lightest. I'm going to do a really light blue, purple, gray color here, but with a lot more water and a lot less color. So then... This layer can be a darker version of that. So this layer, I'm just looking at my colors here and trying to decide how I'm gonna mix these up. So back layer, middle layer, front layer. That's how I think I'm gonna do that. a little tricky this is where acrylics would have been more ideal um, because with acrylics you don't have to wait till the layers dry um, so you can get the right color this might be a little more tricky it might make it so that I have to keep on um, adding layers until I get the right color. So ideally, it might be better to do the first layer and then wait till it dries and then do the next layer. That's probably the smarter way, the easier way to do it. Um, using acrylics.
Now we just have to wait. I can't do any other layers until the other layers dry. And I dripped water into that when I rinsed my brush. Okay, it's pretty dry, so I'm going to come in and do this layer. 